Zoom updated their app again today, and there's a couple of really cool features we're going to talk about today. And for this, I created this little animation that I need to stop right now before it disappears again. Uh, so the new features that I am personally really excited about because I love to facilitate meaningful connections. I like to create experiences on Zoom that are live group experiences. So some of the things that I want to try out is video in waiting room. How cool is that? That will really help start an experience off on a very different note than just seeing text in an image. Number two, recording Immersive View. A feature, if you haven't played around with it yet, Immersive View is a ton of fun. And usually when you record it until now, it would just show a white background with a couple of floating heads. So you don't really get this, the sense of what it was like when you were watching the recording. The third thing we're going to look at is custom post-meeting surveys. And that's actually really cool. You can now set up a few questions for your participants to answer. They'll be redirected to a website. You can either use Zoom or you can use your custom survey link. And there's one thing I want to play around with, which is a custom link to send people to at the end of a Zoom, Zoom meeting. And then the last two, which are actually the two that I will start showing you first because they're the easiest and the quickest to explain, is we now can put emojis directly in the chat without having to use a complicated uh, emoji hotkey sh keyboard shortcut. And the coffee cup is back, and I'm going to share what I think about this coffee cup. So let's jump into um, let's jump into Zoom. Uh, hold on, where is my Zoom window? Here we go. Actually, this is the view that I would like to show you. Here we go. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the coffee cup. The coffee cup is a new add-on down at the reactions button. Uh, I'm going to zoom in there for a second. So we now have, in addition to the nonverbal feedback, check X slower, faster, the coffee cup. And what happens when I click this is it just gets added, as you can see, over there to the top of my screen and says, I'm away. So this is basically whenever you need to step away because you need to do a bio break, you run to the washroom, refill your coffee. You can put that up there so the host, the facilitator, knows that you just stepped away. And I think this is really useful, again, for me as the facilitator, the host. I might be creating breakout rooms, and I want to make sure that if I'm doing pairs, that every person has a partner to do an activity with. And if somebody just stepped away and they just have their video off, I don't know if they have their video off because they have other things going on in their environment, but they're actually there listening or if they actually stepped away. So this is a cool way we can introduce to our participants to share, hey, if you need to take a bio break, just go to the reactions button, click the coffee mug, and once you click it again, it actually disappears. So you can see every time I click it, it kind of disappears or appears again. Talking about different emojis and things that we can use with the reactions button, Let's have a look at the new features in the chat, which is now happening over here. So in the chat, we have a new little symbol that is this little smiley face. And this is where we can access all of our favorite emojis and then send them quickly in the chat so they show up for all of the other participants. So now we don't need to use complicated like keyboard shortcuts to bring up this emoji keyboard that is now hidden behind me. So now we can just click this button, choose the emoji that we want to send. And uh, this is great for check-in activities, for example. Like if you want to um, see who, how people are feeling when they're logging into Zoom, you could say, um, okay, Choose one emoji that represents how you're feeling today. Or maybe even better, my preferred uh, variation of that activity, share three emojis of how you're feeling today because often our feelings are way more complex than being able to fit them into one emoji, right? So uh, might be lots of books. 
and lots of drinking. Maybe that's how I feel today. All right. Next, uh, I would love to quickly share how immersive view looks like. So to turn on immersive view, all we have to do is go to the top here where usually you switch between speaker and gallery view. And then you select immersive. And here you actually get a few different options of um, what you can select. And of course, you can select kind of the art gallery with pictures on the wall, um, the fireplace that is good for two people. And then you can also upload your own custom ones. So I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a moment. This is a little session where I tried this out with some of the members of my facilitator collective. So you can see here we are trying out the art gallery. And the cool thing is you can actually move people around. So if you want to move someone to another spot, you can simply drag and drop them. Remember, only the host is able to do immersive view and only the host can control who goes where. Um, and I'm just going to go to one of the next ones. So uh, this is the classroom. And here you can also see that me and one person on the top right uh, Gene were cut out kind of like in front of a virtual background. The other two people are not. And this is usually uh, depending on their operating system or if they haven't updated their Zoom app. So for immersive view to work, um, you need to make sure that you have the app up to date. And then you can also upload custom in images like if we're sitting at a bar. Uh, here I was trying to put ourselves in this little coffee mug hot tub. We went on top of the roller coaster and uh, even put ourselves in a little bus. And the fun thing is this image actually won us a little contest that Zoom hosted just to get more creative with Immersive View. So if you haven't tried it out yet, I highly recommend checking out Immersive View. And uh, awesome, Jen is here. Jen is watching. Uh, thank you so much for for tuning in. Um, here we go. Jen is also a member of my community. Thanks for watching. Um, what I would love to do next is, let's actually jump back into the intro for a second because I wanna see what did we cover already. We covered, talked about emojis in chat, coffee cup reaction, immersive view. So basically now you can use it and it, it will show up in the recording. I think right now only if you're recording locally. So if you're recording to the cloud, um, Similar to when you spotlight people, it doesn't recognize it in the cloud. You have to record locally for that to show up. Now, the last two things is video in waiting room and custom post meeting survey. So let's quickly talk about the waiting room, which the waiting room, if you are not familiar, is, hold on, where is it? This, this is the view that somebody has who hasn't been entered into the waiting uh, into the meeting yet and you can customize this you can customize the image you can customize the text description and once the host lets you in you are then added to the meeting and you're in so um the the cool thing about the waiting room is yes we can customize it and here is where um let me see here we go oh let's remove that comment again so if you're on the zoom website and you click on settings waiting room is almost one of the top things you can see here and there's a couple of waiting room options so once you have it enabled it you can customize the waiting room and this is where you change the text uh, where you can add the image, where you can add a little paragraph. And I thought, okay, so if they added video to breakout rooms, I could just add a little video right here. Well, here's the fun part about trying to be the first to review those, those new features. Um, I went to the website and it says customization options. If you have waiting room video enabled, I have not found a button that allows me to enable the video in the waiting room yet. So unfortunately, I can't show you this feature yet. And I'm also not really sure how it will work because I assume that based on the description here, 
you can upload a video. So that can be an MP4, MOV, or MV4V file that is up to 30 megabytes in size. So just by those specs, it means it's going to be a short video, maybe like a minute. I'm probably thinking of recording a custom intro to the experience, the workshop, the event that I'm facilitating, having that there. But my question is, does that video play, like do I have an option to play it for everyone at the same time? Or does the video just play as soon as somebody enters individually in the waiting room? Like if one person enters at 4 p.m. and one person enters at 4, 4 or 5, it will start playing the moment they enter. Because what I don't want to happen is admit someone when they're like halfway through the video. So trying to figure out those details and hopefully they will update that very soon so we can actually test it out. And I'll create a new video for that. Um, if you have not subscribed yet, this is a great chance to make sure you're subscribed because I'll be sharing more videos like this, going through Zoom uh, features, trying to figure out how can we use them to create more meaningful and engaging virtual experiences. All right, uh, we have one more thing left, and that is the custom post-meeting survey. And again, we're pretty early in testing this out. So I have figured out how to add the survey, but I wasn't able to test how it shows up yet. So um, we will have to give that a try together if you're up for it. If you're watching this and you're up for giving it a go, can you give me a thumbs up in the chat? Type a yes in the chat. Let me know that you're in. And uh, let's actually jump in and do this. So for this, we will have to schedule a new meeting. Uh, which I just did on the website. And um, on here, after you set up, like I'm just going to leave this all blank, just click Save. doesn't really matter. At the bottom where we had polls, if you've ever created polls, you can see that they're at the bottom down here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Um, this is where you create polls. There's a new tab that now says Survey. And you can see, uh, let me actually zoom in, even more, we got uh, two options, create new survey and use third party survey. So um, let's start by clicking create new survey and I'll walk you through how this works. So now we can, uh, hold on, we'll go out again a bit, here we go. Now we can create our custom survey and we actually have a few different options on what questions we want to ask. Now I'm actually really, really excited to see we have a rating scale, we have multiple choice, single choice, and a long answer, which is everything that I was hoping for, especially the rating scale. If you just wanted to do one quick question, like um, how likely are you to recommend this workshop to your colleagues and go from one to 10 and, oh, and say, not likely, well, not likely to extremely likely and required. Now we have that one survey uh, saved. I can, if I, and it, um, it says show in the browser when the meeting ends. We can preview it as well. This is how it's supposed to be showing up. So it will redirect people to this website where they can just select this button and then click submit. Um, and let's edit that again. And we can add an another question. Let's say this is a long answer. Um, what was your favorite? Oops, not typing. What was your favorite, we're in Canada, favorite O-W, um, part? Uh, you can set max characters, minimum characters. Again, you can make it required or not. Um, you can add another question, multiple choice. will give you different choices. Let's add another question and make a single choice. Here we go. And actually, I try to see how many choices you get. And at one point I just was, I got bored and stopped clicking add choice. So it seems like you can add definitely more than 10, 
I thought 10 might be the maximum, but as you can see, I'm still going 15, 16, 17, uh, 19, 20. Okay, it just keeps going. I'm not going to continue, but you have lots of choices for your multiple choice or single choice uh, questions. So we'll just save this. Again, we'll click preview so you see how that looks like. So we have all of those questions one after the other. And this is where supposedly when the host ends the meeting, all the participants will be redirected to in their browser. Now, what if we have our own custom survey? Like if you use things like SurveyMonkey or Typeform, what if you want to direct people there? For this, you can simply choose, use third-party survey, and it will just ask you to add the link. And I was curious, well, what would happen if I just type in, let's say, a page on my website? If I wanted to redirect people after they've attended a free workshop to maybe a page where they can sign up for my facilitator training. Like, let's say I am running a workshop that is all about teaching people how to create more engaging experiences online. And then when I when they finish, I want to redirect them to my sales page. Could I could I do that? So it lets me add that. It says show in the browser when meeting ends. Now the part that I haven't figured out yet is how that works. So if you're good, let's try it out. I'm gonna come back here into my Zoom app. Uh, in this case, I'm going to make myself the participant. So I will uh, make the other person host. Now I am just a participant and I will let the other device now end the meeting. All right? I'm going to click that in a second. And we'll jump back over here and let's see what happens. Does it redirect me? Are you ready? Three, two, one. Ending the meeting. This meeting is ended by host. But I don't think any browser opened on my end. So it might be because I was the host of this account and I'm not sure if the host also gets redirected or maybe it had some problems with the link. So I don't know yet exactly how this feature works. If you end up trying it out, let me know. I'll be experimenting with that over the next few days and I'll post any updates that I will find out. For now, this is it for today. I think we went through all the different things that are new. There's a few more features that have been released, but I find they're not as crucial as those ones right here when it comes to facilitating really deeply connected experiences. I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.